Welcome to your lesson on problem solving with two-step equations. So usually everyone dreads the word problem because they're hard to get through, there's lots of words, you're not really sure how to set them up. So today's lesson is going to walk you through a process of how to solve a word problem using algebra. Now a lot of these you're going to be able to do guess and check to get the correct answer, but the most important thing here is we're looking for the process. We want you to set up these equations, um, or set up these problems using an algebraic equation. So the very first step when you're solving a word problem is to define the variable. And that is the quantity that you're trying to find. So usually for this, you're going to look at the question. Um, for example, the first problem says how many shirts were sold in July. That's going to be what guides you to define your variable. The second step is to write an equation that represents the situation. This is where you're going to look for clues in the words. More than, less than, times, is. Those are the words that you're going to translate from English to math language. The next step is to solve the equation that you've just written. And to do this, you're going to follow the, the same steps that we were working with for two-step equations. So undo your addition and subtraction, and then undo your multiplication and division. The last two steps are going to be how you represent your answer. So in this class, we want you to write an answer statement. So you should be writing in a complete sentence. And with that, make sure you have a label. And usually when you write your statement, the label just kind of naturally takes place. But make sure that you are considering your units and make sure that you are labeling your quantities. All right, so let's get started. Our first example um, reads like this. The number of shirts sold by a department store in August was eight more than three times the number of shirts sold in July. In August, 107 shirts were sold. How many shirts were sold in July? So here's where I think many of you would just stop because there's too many words and you don't know where to begin. So what I want to do is break this down into small pieces and I want you to start to look for the English words that are going to translate into math words. Um, before that though, we want to make sure that we know what our variable should be. So let's look at the question and it says how many shirts were sold in July? And that's going to be the step that helps us define our variable. So somewhere on our paper we're just going to write x equals the number of shirts sold in July. That's our unknown, and that's what we're trying to solve for. The next step is to set up our equation. So I'm seeing some numbers here. Um, I'm seeing in August there were eight more than three times the number sold in July. And I'm also seeing that in August there were 107 shirts. So let's circle that 107, because to me that looks like a total. And usually a total is going to go on one side of the equal sign. Now it says, um, in August, we had eight more than three times the number sold in July. Well, eight more than, above the word more than, you could put a plus sign because in math, more than means to add. Three times, obviously times means we're going to multiply. And now we just kind of put this into our equation. So three times the number of shirts sold in July. Well, the number of shirts sold in July is what we chose for x. So that's going to be 3x. And I have eight more than that, so I'm going to be adding eight to that. And here we have our two-step equation. From here we just solve, so we undo addition first, which means we subtract eight from both sides. We bring down the three x, we bring down our equal sign, and that's 99. And now we divide both sides by three. And make sure you are using the fraction bar for division, as opposed to the division symbol. And then x would be 33. But you don't stop here. Um, we've answered the question, we've done the algebra, but remember the fourth and fifth step are to write your answer statement and to make sure there's a label. So all you have to do here is say there were 33 shirts sold in July. And that would suffice for your answer statement as well as your label. And sometimes with all this writing, it's not a bad idea just to put a box or a circle or a bubble or a cloud or some sort of a notation around your answer. Okay, let's try another example. Here we're going to look at a cell phone company that charges $29.99 per month plus $0.40 cents per minute. How many minutes were used if the monthly bill is $139.99? So again, let's look at the question to define our variable, and it says how many minutes. So our unknown here is going to be the number of minutes used. And the rest here, to set up the equation, um, again, let's kind of look for the total. And if you notice here, our monthly bill is 
So that looks like our total. We're going to put that on one side of the equal sign. And now we want to figure out what's going into that total. It says that it's $29.99 per month. That to me sounds like that's a flat fee. No matter how many minutes you use, you're going to have to pay this $29.99 each month. The 40 cents per minute is what's going to fluctuate depending on your minutes. So we're going to take that 40 cents and we're going to multiply it by x. Now when you write 40, some of you are just going to write 40. Remember that it's 40 cents, not $40 per minute. So make sure you get your decimal point in there. Now you'll see we have an equation that looks just like a two-step equation. The x is in a different spot, but that doesn't change how we solve the equation. We're going to subtract $29.99 from each side. You bring down the 0.40x. And that gives us 1 tenth. And then we're going to divide both sides by the 40 cents. And using our calculators if necessary, we find out that we have 275. But don't stop here. You want to make sure that you write an answer statement. So you could say 275 minutes were used this month. And you can easily check your answer by just plugging the 275 back into the equation. So you can multiply it by the 40 cents and add the 29.99, and that should give you your total of 139.99. This concludes your lesson on problem solving with two-step equations, and you can now go on to your worksheet.